dear friends and buddies, for the recent past two years, friends have notified me and followed up by sending and donating to me their pots so that I can go through with them the telltale signs indicating that they are not real fully handmade and not even susha pots in the first place. So as encouraged by many friends and as promised in our earlier episodes, we will do it by various tutorials starting with today's episode. 99.999% of fully handmade zisha pots sold on the market are fakes, not fully handmade and not even made of zisha. This is a long running series and each pot will bring to the table its different manifestations which allow us to cut through them, allow us to learn from them and decipher any future fully handmade zisha pots this will come along in our journey. First, upon approaching the pot, we look at the overall shape, the sing ti. First impression, a proper si shi shouldn't look like this. Its spout is just not proper. It is a bit weird. It should be like this. and not like this. Remember that even for half handmade and machined pots, manual handwork is required to fix on the spout, the handle and the lid knob. The fixing and the formation of this spout seems to have been a quick fix for the worker working on volumes, churning out pots fast on the production chain and this worker wanted to quickly affix the spout and get it over and done with. At this point, we should be immediately alerted and be suspicious. And then we proceed to look at the innards. Here we see the solar lines the solar brush lines which appear not in the solar fashion but in various careless directions. We proceed and we observe that there is a lack of a rear adjoining line. If this is truly a half handmade pot which the seller proclaims it to be, there would be a rear adjoining line. However, in this pot, it is all smooth. Look here friends, on the periphery of the base, there are parts where we notice a completely smooth transition from the base to the side wall. Mm -hmm. 
This is beyond suspicious. This pot is not a half handmade pot which the seller proclaims it to be. And we know that in the formation of a jigger machined pot, the base plate and the sidewall are created as one piece in the jigger jolly machine process and thus would not exhibit this seam. This is thus a jigger jolly machined pot whereby the worker had been careless and missed out on brushing the full round, the full periphery to disguise its absence of the adjoining seam and thus leaving parts of this smoothness evident. Because while forming a half handmade pot, the base plate and the side walls come from two different slabs of zisha clay and there would be an adjoining seam whereby the craftsman attaches more watery zisha clay so as to join the base plate slab with the side wall slab. We proceed and we feel the upper rim of the inner wall. I can feel that it is absolutely smooth all round and this is one of the hallmarks of a jigger jolly machined pot and a slip custard pot. If this had been a fully handmade pot, it would have a man pian, another flat piece of slab attached, affixed onto the top of the main body slab. After which the craftsman would cut a circular opening through it. This man pian would show up the adjoining seam like this. In a fully handmade si shi, one should be able to see the adjoining line or seam on the outside and also feel the circumferential edge on the flip side on the inside. The inside rim should feel something like this, usually a bit thicker on top, and then an edge which can feel a bit jagged, and then thinned off onto the main body slab as you feel down along the side. Here, we move on logically from the top plate man pian to the base plate di pian. In the making of fully handmade and half handmade zisha pots, the separate base slab di pian is applied 
onto the main side wall slab, thus bearing this seam visible near the base of this fully handmade sishu. Machined pots and slip casted pots will lack this seam because the side wall and the base are formed from one singular piece of ceramic clay. I would like to make a mention here that this Dipian seam can be seen in any other fully handmade or half handmade pots where the wall silhouette continues straight down to meet the tabletop. For example, Duo Qiu, Fang Gu, Shi Piao, Mei Ren Jian, and De Zhong. As opposed to pots like Duo Zhi, Pan Hu, Xiao Ying, which bear a distinct Quan Zhu round foot. Zisha pots can only be slab built and can never be subjected to wheel throwing, nor can it tolerate the machining forces, nor can it be applied to slip casting methods. Thus, when a pot is identified as not a fully handmade nor half handmade pot, it is definitely not a zisha pot. Machining, slip casting, and wheel throwing requires the use of other types of pasty ceramic materials other than zisha. All such resultant ceramic mixes used for these three methods will thus lack the specific characteristics of zisha, most critically the double-sized pores inherent in all pure easing zisha types. Because a jigger machined pot is never made of zisha, its side walls feel compacted, smooth, with no fluffiness or looseness. Here in this pot, the worker obviously conducted his usual tour of duty, disguising this compactness and smoothness by brushing high up along the side walls.
another thing. This pot feels a bit too heavy for a zisha pot, for a sishi pot this small, and with this thinness of the wall. Therefore, this is another clue to its machined origins. It just feels too heavy for its shape, its size, and its thickness of wall. Dear friends and buddies, thank you for your time going through the entire episode. I want to arm all of you with what we in the know have in experience and knowledge. In the next episode, we will decipher one interesting but fake handmade zisha shi piao pots that had won over many of my friends as one of the top pots to learn from. See you very soon, dear friends and buddies. Thank you.